Bert come down here. Basically, the whole idea of the seminar is for all of your musicians and bands to get a feel for the music industry. Um, pretty much know what you're getting into. Let's talk a little bit about guitar. Okay. Um, you know, feel free to ask any questions about you know, you know musically, theory, or anything like that. Whatever's on your mind, that's the reason he's here. Is basically to to help you out. You know, with whichever situation you're in, playing and anything. So if you have any, if you have any questions, or you want to... well, uh, the one thing I could say is, I just the last one we did is the first time I've ever done this. So this is the second. So don't expect me to just come out and start handling we just really good because it's actually very I'm very nervous about speaking in front of people so I mean you got to help me out with questions and if there's anything I can help you out I'd be glad to do it so <laughs> Everybody had a million questions to ask me about him. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Uh, what kind of effects do you use when you're playing out, say, in concerts? In, in the concerts? Yeah. So I have a pedal board, and in it there's Distortion Plus, a 10-band equalizer. They're all MXR, by the way. A uh, flanger, a chorus, stereo chorus, a crybaby, a wah pedal, and... Um, a rolling volume pedal. And I used to use them a lot more, but now our sound man is starting to add a lot up front. So I don't really use them all as much as I used to. But just sometimes, I use them more for quiet rhythm parts, just to enhance the sound. I don't really use any echoes or anything for leads, ever. Uh, do you have a preamp building No, I, I have a distortion plus on the board. And, uh, I just keep that on all the time. And uh, this is straight marshals. That I can use some Sorry? That I can only distortion. Yeah. See, if you if you play and you use marshals, I had to change the speakers over to Altex because they're a very bright, clean speaker. Yeah. Because the selections are really dirty anyway. And if you start adding a fuzz box to them, it'll sound terrible. But I, uh, I like that added treble and dirt to it. Yes, uh, I, the guy in the last session was asked me about that. It's not so much a squeal. Um, I don't have that problem, but I have a lot of problem of uh, like if you let go for a second, it'll feed back. I mean, you've got to really play. So you're, you're, you're covering your pickup, and if you want to do something quiet, I have to either use the volume pedal or I have to click off the fuzz because it'll it will squeal. I mean, I I got used to playing that way. Go ahead, just what kind of music do you start playing and how long do you play before you got picked up with the last couple of Well, I'm seven and I'm 25 now. Um, I don't think I knew what I was playing when I was seven. I just played the guitar. I mean, I, one of the early things I remember was I, I was strumming, um, is it Malaguena when it has the echo? And I thought, I, like, that was really good because I could switch an echo and strum it fast. It was just anything, you know. It was an, an old Spanish guitar. And, um, then I just started playing anything, like Gloria or Louis Louis or whatever was out on the radio. And to the second part of that question, I met Ozzy when I was 22, and I've been with him since then. So it's about two and a half years now. Can you speak up a little bit? Oh, yeah. Tommy's great, too. Uh, do you have a special tremolo in that in your uh, flying vein you use, or is it in the start of company you make that, or is that just... Well, the main flying V is the white one, if you've seen it, is a Charvel. It says Jackson, everybody thinks, what's a Jackson, but Grover Jackson owns Charvel, and he builds them himself for me. And um, 
I use his tremolo units. I, I think they're very good. I mean, other than the Floyd Rose, there's no perfect tremolo. But his are very good, and he's just about to release a brand new one he invented that's supposed to be equal to a uh, Floyd Rose. But it works with ball bearings. And as he's just doing a prototype, and he's doing a guitar for me now, and it'll be the first to use it. So real soon, I'll, I'll start experimenting with it. Uh, I have a, another Flying V with the it's polka dive. That is in the Charvel, and I do have tuning problems with that one all the time. <coughs> Go ahead. <laughs> hey, whenever you started, did you have to play in little heck bars, you know, to get going, play what the people wanted, or did you always play what you wanted? Well, when I started, um, I was doing, I was really young. So when I started playing rock, I was about 12 and 13, and where I came from, the big thing was to play parties. I mean, there was a lot yeah. of bands where I lived, and they'd all play parties. And I wasn't really from the city, it's sort of a suburb. And I thought that was it, I loved it. I couldn't wait till the weekend so I could play. And we used to cart our own beer up and everything. And then of course, I got to the club scene in LA. That was a big circuit Well yeah, there's a great big local club scene in LA. It's a, it's a lot of opportunity for original <coughs> bands to play. You know, a lot more than there is in these parts, which is hard. They just shout them out. I mean, well, see, I get asked all the time, who's your favorite, who's your influences? If you play so long, they're bound to change. Whoever's good, you listen to for a while. But I'd never had a, a phonograph until I think I was 16. So I couldn't just play my favorite guitar player, so I'd listen to the radio. And I just sort of liked everybody, anybody who was good. But I, I can say one of my favorite sounds was when I first heard Mountain and Leslie West with that harmonics and the sustain. I mean, I just thought it was the greatest thing. But since then, I just, you know, I just like anybody who plays guitar, you know, I don't have a favorite. No, that's the bass player. The ex-bass player, Bob Daisy. Is it a new bass player? Yes. Is it not Bill Sheen? No, his name is Rudy. He used to play with me in L.A. in a local band. Who have you played with before? Did you play with any other people before you go around the other one? No, I was in a, a local band in L.A. for five years. I mean, I sort of grew up in that band. And I was still in it when I met Ozzy. I, I had to leave that band. And other than that, just like garage bands and <coughs> little efforts that didn't work. How did Ozzy meet? How did what? How did Ozzy meet? Well, when he left Sabbath, he was putting a new band, like his own band together. And he just went around auditioning. And he spent a lot of time in L.A. auditioning. And the bass player he originally was auditioning with called me and said he still hasn't found him. You know, why don't you go down and meet him? So I met him. So, when do you think of Barbara Guitar as Michael Shanker? I think Michael Shanker is excellent. I think he's a great rock player. He's very melodic and lots of feeling. Do you have any other guitars you think are like that caliber? Oh, I, I could name a hundred. I mean, every everybody's out there is really good at what they do. I mean, Eddie Van Halen's fantastic. <laughs> Michael Shanker's great. Ricky Blackman. Sorry? Frank Bruno. Bobby Rush. No, we did a show with him in England once, but I didn't meet him. I met somebody from his band. Who's think of Angus? Angus Young. Yeah. Oh, I, I think of what he's doing, he's doing great. I mean, he's got, he's got a, you know, his image so strong. So bright and strong. Are you from California? Yeah, I'm born and raised in L.A. Uh, when you wrote a lead, do you go for a... Uh, Melody type feel, or you go for more of a technical dazzle type? 
Well, it, it depends you know, on the whatever the progression is and the, the sort of mood of the song. And it's a good question because a lot of people sometimes when they go to put a lead down, sometimes they think of themselves too much first and they want to put it all out. But you got to think what kind of song it is. You've got to put something that suits the song really well. And it's great to do both. I mean, if it has a melodic progression, you know, I'd like to play melodic. What do you think about Richie Blackmore? I think he's great. He's one of, he was one of my real early favorites. He's very, uh, he's got great bluesy phrasy. You know, it, it really made me listen to a lot of blues. Uh, I didn't know much about him. Uh, I was asked that earlier. Uh, I didn't know a real lot about Black Sabbath when I met Ozzy, and I was saying to earlier that's probably why I, I get along with Ozzy, because I, I just, you know, we're different, come from different music backgrounds. Have you ever talked about the band why you left? Oh yeah, all the time. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I, they weren't getting along, things like that. I mean, it was a long time. They were together 14 years or something like that. What do you think are the main things for having a good band? For having a good band? A real good band. Well, I'd say the main thing, aside from that you can all play together well, is that you all really are on the same level mentally. I mean, if one of you wants to go out and earn money in a lounge, or, and the other guy wants to go out and do originals just to play, then you got a contrast. Yeah. I think you all should want the same thing out of your band and like the same sort of thing. Good start, I think. Is it true that when you went to audition with Ozzy Osbourne that you didn't really have to play anything, you just hooked up in tunes? Yeah, a lot it, was of really, about that. It, was, it was more embarrassing than this, getting up in front of a group of people. Uh, I thought I was going to go play with a band, and um, I met him at a recording studio, and I just brought a tune-up amp, which is yeah, you know, a little small, small amp. And if, if you've been in a recording studio, they have a glass booth up there. But, I was through the tune of them, no effects, nothing, I mean, just straight through that mic, and they were all listening, they said, okay, play. They said, well, you got to be joking, you know, what could I play? No musicians. So I just thought, oh no, I didn't know what to do, and I just started warming up, and he said, yeah, you're good, you, you know. I only played for a couple of seconds, and then I got kind of mad because I thought, well, you haven't even heard me yet. <laughs> Did he really chew a bat's head off? <laughs> I got asked this earlier, too. <laughs> I'll leave it to your imagination. <laughs> Sorry? Well, Lee and Bob, both of them, had been in the business a long time, and, and I think uh, Ozzy wanted to go out and do a lot of touring, and I don't think they really felt they needed to anymore. I think they just wanted to do the easiest way possible. And, you know, it was a whole new start for us. It was like starting over, so I believe he wanted musicians that need, had the freshness to it. That's basically it. No I, I'm 25. I turned 25 December. Yeah, uh, do you have anything? Not all amazing. I can mention the warm-up today. Well... About the window over the mouth. Which leg? Uh, with the brakes, or the empty brakes, where you play in the, uh, the fast downward drive. Yeah, any particular one. The main lead brake is the first one. <laughs> and it's... Oh, it's right. <laughs> It's A minor.
really all there is to it. Like, it's just one real lick and it. the rest is just a uh, noise. <laughs> yeah, the last session, uh, it's really hard to just sit up here and play anything, so if there's something you want me to play, uh, you know, I'll try to play. <laughs> I'll tell you what, are you coming tonight? <laughs> it's a bit long. <laughs> and also, it, it sort of, you sort of have to do all that loud. There's a lot of feedback. and But is there anything in particular in there? Like, Soul of Mother Earth. Okay, it's an E. And it's very similar to a harmonic scale. It starts on E flat. And it goes up to E flat again. Then it's just an octave with the fish. It sounds a lot different live. I'm trying to slow it down so you can see what I'm playing. But it'd be like. Coming up from high E minor, there it goes. Right, the only weird notes are the the harmonic parts in E minor, which is, is that any help? I mean, I've got a, a very clean sound here, so. It, if you want me just to play a solo, just like the record, it'd be better if you wanted to learn what I'm doing in it, because I could never really get the same sound. Hey, Crazy Train. It leads to Crazy Train. The last part of Crazy Train is like a one that you do, like a ballad, don't you? Like a, it's, it's the last lead, uh, last part of the lead on Crazy Train. Oh, the run at the end? Yeah. Okay, it's in F sharp. I'm trying to remember because I don't do that run live anymore. But it's uh I think that's how it ends. See uh I know that's the run, I don't know the ending of the phrase I use in the record. But it goes uh one and a half steps behind a shark. In fact, I'll show you an A too, like, okay, if you're an A here, so that would, would be the same thing in F sharp. Like, you know when you do this kind of stuff? Like, yeah. Is there a word for that, a name? False or is it just a like, stop? It's just uh, hammer-ons. Hammer-ons. Well, that's what you're doing here. Uh -huh. I don't really know if there's a name or not. False, false harmonics. What is it? False harmonics. Is that what they're called? Because they're not really a harmonic, is it? No. no. Could you play the false harmonics that you do in uh, Flying High again? Yeah, lead sure. on that? Um, you know what? I wouldn't mind having that equalizer again. <laughs> okay, uh, it starts on C sharp. Yeah. And then you do... It's a false harmonics, as you say. Learn <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a one A, and you move both hands. It's just going to hook this up. It's it's very clean, so I'm going to try to get some sustain. Which, you, not to say that it makes you play there, but it it really sounds stupid, doesn't it? Empty. Uh, yeah. But anyways, while he's doing that, you move both hands one half step. So you take the first string. And you're on A here, C sharp here. You do your hammer on, then move it up a half step, both hands. In other words, the string and the false harmonic. And you go up a half step each. Okay, what key are you playing that in? Fly high. It's an A. Because when I play Crazy Train, if I go to play Flying High again, I'm a half tone now. Is you tune different? It's tuned semi tone down. Okay. Okay, so. To show you what I mean, is the is a then you move to the key of E. So in other words, both hands 
the movie never has that. That's a string. Are they both on the same string? No, see, each string moves up. Like on the second, first string. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Then you move to the second string a half step up. All you right. do the same thing with your false harmonic. Half step up. And the next string, half step up. And so on. And the same thing, you go up to the fourth fret and the seventh, which would be an E. It ends on L. How do you play your easy track? What's wrong with that? E or F sharp, I think. Mean. Yeah, it starts on F sharp. Can you play the beginning of Crazy Train? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Do you have a wah wah on that? Push no. all the way up at the beginning? No, just a distortion like it is now. Because it, it does sound like you have a wah wah. On the rhythm. That's the What's the run there? Oh, yeah. What's the run you do right after that? After the rhythm. After the rhythm, you just play. Yeah, just the same. <laughs> what chords are these? Pretty fast. A, E, D, A. And at the end, if you use inversions, it goes. Which is A. With the third on the bass, and E, the third on the bass, then A. Not D, then E. This would be a D. So it's an you know, A, E, D, A. That's just the very last time I need to do it. What's the one in the chorus? Is there any way to get a mic up there? Because I can't hear that question. Can you speak up? Not you know. <laughs> Sorry, you do have to do it. Metal wound is not healing. The grip is good after that. It's like a... a do that live because it sounds really sloppy but what that is I mean you could I used to do that live but there's nothing technical about that except you're just taking the kid it's F sharp minor right and I'm not going to lie and say you do that all the way up it was like a fix slide to the chord quick before it died I mean when you play loud things like that you can pop for a time uh, what do you tune down to? Well, I didn't on the first album. In, on the second album, it was just a lot of people do it. I never did it. But when we were uh, writing the second album, the tuner we had was was off. It, it was not on. And I got to like some of the sounds for uh, some of these songs. But it gives you a much heavier. Uh, sounds of the chords, especially like an A chord, having that A flat tone, or an E. Um, basically, it just gives you a more sort of meaner sound to, to the chord. Live, uh, some of the songs are tuned normal, some are tuned down, so I have some different guitars tuned differently. That's basically all it is. What type of strings you well, I do a lot of things um, with the first, second, and fourth finger just to sort of warm them up. 
Sometimes I do a lot of hammer on it, so I just basic. You know, you go up and down the neck. But I don't do those so much anymore. I, I used to do it before a gig, and they really warm up my fingers. Just different sort of. Well, the first album, when I first met Ozzy, there was no band yet, so I was staying at his house, and he and I were just sort of knocking ideas around, and then we met Bob, and the three of us, while we were looking for a drummer, auditioning, we were just sort of messing around with riffs and ideas. And we didn't actually get a drummer until a week before it we went in the studio, so we had most of it together. Mainly it's just sitting around with a tape recorder on and just keep, keep at it, keep looking for ideas. And you'll finally come up with them. I mean, it takes a long time. It takes a few days before you come up with anything at all. But it's not really ever the whole band at once writing because really the song comes from either a riff or a melody or a combination of the two. It's not like you all come up with something at the same time. You know what I mean? Okay. We don't do that song live. Well, <laughs> we use the tape, but I will show you the chorus of that if you want to learn it. I'm sorry? Can you play longer than an hour and a half? No, hour and a half is what we play. <laughs> Dire Manor, sure. It's like, it would be comparable to an A with a flatted fifth. So in other words, you got a root, third, then you flat to E. Use with the opening, you get... You get that dissonance. You got a seventh, which is a G. Yeah, it's a C7, or I use it as an E, e diminished. 
which is uh, very, very close to the same chord. pictures of this castle thing, but they're big arches at the moment. He's up in the yard, but so looking out the window. What is the drum set? Well, there's a, a riser in the center with, with steps. It comes from inside the riser. Is he going to bomb himself off? No, he's not. Uh, we were doing that. When we have the hand, he was meant to blow up and all the stuff flies everywhere. But I mean, the kids weren't really buying it. So, I'm trying to be good. It would have been great. Like, it would have been great. Sorry? Can I smash anything tonight? Smash it, yeah. yeah. I've been using Siri on 30 of the target. Look, you might give me one, I'll send it to you. Don't you? Can you play here with Def Leppard? You put on a hell of a guitar solo. When you, uh, when you play your guitar solo, do you change them every so often or do you play the same ones every night? The solos. Yeah. You mean in the center there was. I think you. I'm not sure what song you cut out. Just you. Yeah. Your guitar. Well. It's basically the same. I just improvise on it. Um, it depends, actually, the sound I have on stage. If it's a bad sound, I do a very sort of basic form of it. If it sounds really good, I like to carry on with it. I, uh, I had a different one in, in England. It was a lot longer. But, I mean, the kids didn't really know what I was, and it's kind of... I just wanted to get it short and to the point. If they have a nominated people one of the best guitars of the year, I would have shot them all. Yeah, that, that would be really great. The best thing that's ever happened to me. Are you going to hold his mouth? Yeah, that's our opening number. Opening number? That's good. Did you have one more question? Thank you. 